preauricular sinus was first described by Van Huesinger in 1864. It is a benign congenital malformation of the preauricular soft tissue, also termed as preauricular pit, preauricular tract, or preauricular cyst. The commonest site is in the preauricular area, but can also happen in other areas like ascending limb of helix. In that case, as you are seeing here, the sinus tract may go posteriorly into the postaural area. Depending upon the sinus tract, there are classically three variant type 1, type 2 and type 3 other than the classical preauricular sinus. Pinna is developing from six auricular hillocks and incomplete fusion of this hillocks will lead to blind-ended preauricular sinus. Estimated incidence of 0.1 to 0.9 percentage in the general population, more often unilateral and occasionally bilateral forms are inherited. Right side is more often involved and females more than males. And also there is an association or possible locus for congenital preauricular fistula to chromosome number 8q11 and q13. And in the bilateral cases, there is an association with so many syndromes and the commonest being a brachio-autorenal syndrome, which is autosomal dominant inheritance. Hearing assessment and renal ultrasound is recommended in this case. Majority of PAs will remain asymptomatic and in that case, no treatment is required. If there is frequent discharge and abscess formation, acute phase is treated with antibiotic analgesics and anti-inflammatory drugs. And sometimes there will be also preauricular lymph node separation along with an infected preauricular sinus. And after the acute phase which is treated with antibiotics, 4 to 6 weeks uh, is needed. After the subsidence of infection, four to, after 4 to 6 weeks, proceed with surgery. The standard technique is to excise an eclipse of skin surrounding the preauricular sinus opening and to dissect out the individual tract. And uh, sometime the tract is adjacent to the underlying cartilage and in that case, it is better to excise a portion of the underlying cartilage also. And meticular dissection and complete removal of the fistulas are the key to avoid post-op recurrence.